This call is now being recorded. Okay, so the final topic that we have is basically nuclear physics. Now, the last question will always be from this in your paper two and as well as paper one. And this topic I really like because it's so simple and it's uh, something new to learn as well, because this is something you might not have done before. Maybe some part of it, but not entirely. So let's have a look at it. Now, thank you, Shazid. Thank you. So first of all, we're going to start off with the concept of alpha scattering experiment. Now for alpha scattering experiment, you guys need to have an evacuated chamber. Let's remove the air inside. And you have a alpha particle emitter. I'm gonna explain what is alpha particle. Most of you already know from IG but alpha particles are of plus two charge. Then we put in the middle a gold foil. So then this is gets the gold foil and now let's have a look so when alpha particles are emitted most of them either went straight like this or they went at very small angles like that some of them basically oh wait this is not correct this is correct okay very small angles some of them basically deflected at large angles and some just went back, very few actually. So we need to see what is happening in this one. So first of all, we will write, we basically write in a table, write deflection, then observation, and then conclusion. So, these uh, observations were taken by Geiger and Mueller. These were the students of their teacher called Brother Ford. So this was the first ever, you know, structure. Uh, they gave us the structure of an atom, which is really close to what we have today. So they observed that the deflections were uh, which were from 0 to 10 degrees so most of the alpha particles went undeflected or deflected at very small angles all right so this is something you guys need to remember now they also observed that some of them deflected at large angles from 10 degrees to 90 so some of the alpha particles deflected at large angles then 90 to 180 degree 
So those that went back were very few particles. Now, if I give you uh, a number, so total basically emissions they checked were 8,000. Out of 8,000, about four to five particles basically deflected large angles. And out of 8,000, one or two particles went back. Is it clear, everyone? Now, Rutherford explained this by a few things. He said that most of the atoms consist of empty space. That is the reason that most of the atom consist of empty space. And that is the reason that they just go undeflected. Because today, if you look at the structure, so basically it's like that. And let me copy this. So the particles which went undeflected were those which were no way near to the nucleus. So they had to just go straight like that, a very little deflections. Then for the ones that deflected at very large angles, so he said that all the positive charge is concentrated at the center of an atom, which means those particles which went little closer to the nucleus had to deflect at large angles because of the repulsive force. Then he talked about the last one that why some, the, some particles, like very, very few particles just went back. So he said that almost all the mass of an atom is concentrated in a tiny nucleus. Now, this tiny word, tiny, is a key word because this explains the size of a nucleus. And it means the particles that just went, like got in front of the nucleus had no choice but to get repelled backwards like this. Is it clear, everyone? Okay, very good, very good. Now, I just want to give you a note that this experiment never led to the discovery of neutron. So they could not find it from there. This was much later than this, that the neutron was found out. But for now, you guys should remember that this is like that. All right, kids. Write it down, please. OK. Now, with that said, you can write this down, please, and then I'm going to go forward.
Okay, kids, everything is clear. Should I go forward, please? Now, what you guys need to remember is few important things for the estimation. So the radius of proton or a neutron is about 10 raised to minus 15 meters. Radius of nucleus is also about 10 raised to power minus 15 and sorry, minus 14 to minus 15 meters. Then radius of an atom is about 10 raised to minus 10 meters. So it's almost like 100,000 times uh, atom is bigger than the uh, nucleus and that's why we're writing that nucleus is so tiny so if you have never taken chemistry don't worry you guys need to remember in periodic table there are many uh you know elements so you have a value a here and a value z here just want to tell you that this a is called the atomic mass which is also known as the nucleon number nucleon number refers to protons plus neutrons whereas z is the atomic number which is also called the proton number and for this one it means that it's only the number of protons in a nucleus. So when you see something like an element, a very popular one is carbon-12. So you guys need to remember that these are relative charge and relative mass. So with the mass, there is a value called U. And with the charge, there's a value called E. Now what these are, number one, 1U is known as the unified atomic mass. The value of 1U is 1.66 times 10 raised to a minus 27 kilograms. This is given in the exam, but if you remember this, that's very good. The other thing is 1E. This is basically the elementary charge, which is the smallest charge anything can have. So elementary charge is about 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs, right? Elementary charge means that not the smallest charge anything can have, but it's basically a charge on a proton or a or an electron, like that. So you can write this down, please, and then I'll show you how to find mass in kilograms and coulombs in a bit. Now, in an example like this, suppose it says find the charge and mass of oxygen 16 in SI units. So you have oxygen. 16, 8, and we want to find the mass and charge. So first of all, 16 means that the mass of this is going to be 16 U. So I'm going to multiply 16 with the atomic mass number, which is 1.66 times 10 raised to minus 27. And then this will give me about 2.66 times 10 raised to minus 26 kilograms. So this is the mass in kg. 
if we are required to find the charge, like in this question, you know, it's 8E, so 8 times 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19, which basically means it's going to be the charge on the nucleus of oxygen is 1.28 times 10 raised to minus 18 coulombs. Any questions, please let me know. All right, any questions now, please let me know. Should I go forward, please? Okay. Uh, Salma, Fukan, Shazib, Dania, Asma. Everything is clear? All right. Now, sometimes, this this question from the exam paper that says estimate the density of hydrogen nucleus which is h11 so you've given that Now, the density is basically mass per unit volume. We know the mass of this is just 1 U, which is equivalent to 1.66 times 10 to minus 27 kilograms. But we don't know the volume. But we should remember that I told you that radius of a, a nucleus is 10 raised to minus 15 which means that then I can use V is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube as the formula for sphere. So we're assuming it's sphere. So 4 by 3 pi, put 10 raised to minus 15 m here and take the cube. Then to find the uh, density, density is mass over volume. So I'm going to divide 1.66 times 10 raised to minus 27 by 4 by 3 by 10 raised to minus 15 cube. And this will give me density as 3.98 times 10 raised to power 17 kilograms per meter cube. So it's very dense then. Like that. All right, kids. Any questions? Let me know. I'm coming back. Six. Okay. 
Okay. So that would be all for today then. Tickets when we meet again, we're gonna inshallah complete this and then come back to whatever you want to revise. Start off from dynamics. All right. See you then. Have a nice day. Bye.